Architectural inspiration for excellent design can be found almost anywhere, even in your own living room. But today I wanna to talk about some of the best places you can find architectural inspiration. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about technology and architecture. Today, we're talking about the best places to find architectural inspiration. So like always, we're gonna jump around this house as much as possible to keep you guys engaged. The first place I find my architectural inspiration is Instagram. There are millions and millions of different pages out there that you can go out and follow, but I wanna give you some of my top and best architectural inspirations that I always end up saving something on Instagram to. The first page I find really inspiring is Inspiring Architect. Yes, great pun, I know, haha. -ha. Inspiring Architect has an enormous feed that is continuously updated of just architecture you wouldn't find anywhere else. It's usually foreign architecture to me. It's not Australian architecture, but it really inspires you to push boundaries and go beyond the limits. The next page I follow is a little bit more to home. It's called The Local Project. The Local Project features some of the best houses in Australia and in New Zealand, and they truly are some of the absolute best. They are all designed by architects or for architects, even for their own personal homes. So you know when an architect designs their own personal home, it's the best thing they've ever done because they put so much thought and emphasis into detail on those projects. The local page is phenomenal to follow. I'll run through the next couple pages pretty quickly and throw them up on the screen so you can see what they do and some of the amazing work they have. So I also follow Amazing Architecture, Archi Render, TR, Vogue Designs, my Modern Interior, Archie Lovers, and A Designer's Mind. Out of that entire list, I think My Modern Interior and A Designer's Mind truly give you some of the best inspiration from that list. So these two pages, I definitely recommend you follow to draw some inspiration from. I'll leave every one of these links down in the description below so you can check them out whenever you get a chance. The next page I find my inspiration from is Pinterest. I know this is the most generic, inspirational, page you can find and clients are going to come to you with Pinterest boards that you're going to be sick of Pinterest. But Pinterest is a good starting point. It is one of those pages that you can scroll endlessly and end up finding the exact same thing you're looking for, which is good. I recommend making all sorts of different Pinterest boards for all sorts of different designs. So for example, I have boards for residential design in Hampton style, industrial style, modern, postmodern, and all sorts of different themes. I also do the same thing for commercial design and then I break it down further. I have some Pinterest boards just for bathrooms and just for bathroom design. I have Pinterest boards just for kitchens, just for laundries, just for small details. Pinterest boards are great just to really remember and refresh your mind on that style and how you design a style and what you like in that style. Pinterest is not the be all end all. It doesn't have the best content. It doesn't have nearly anything up to date that you really were looking for but it does have enough to get you started. And that's all you really wanna remember with this point. The next source of inspiration is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great because you end up connecting with the professionals around you and in your area. So LinkedIn can genuinely give you some up and coming projects around your area that are doing phenomenally well. If you make the right connections on LinkedIn, you can also end up getting a job from LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is one of the most powerful inspirational resources for architecture in 2021. One of the things to keep in mind with LinkedIn is LinkedIn is very, very public. So whatever you do, whatever you showcase, whatever you like, no matter whose page you visit is 100% transparent. So if I go and click on your LinkedIn page, you're gonna be able to see that I've clicked on it. If I go and like something, you're gonna be able to see that. So make sure that you don't like or comment or view the wrong people's page. All right, cool David, LinkedIn, what about something a little bit less generic? Well, what about Arc Daily? Arc Daily is a phenomenal website, and if you haven't heard of it already, I'm pretty sure you have. It has almost every single project ever imaginable that was any good. It has an overwhelming amount of information on that website, however, so just keep that in mind when you do go on Arc Daily. Arc Daily showcases some of the best projects around the entire world. So it doesn't matter if you're looking for inspiration from Germany, Greece, Italy, Mexico, or anywhere else that you can think of, there is more than likely a project from that country in Arc Daily. One of the best things about Arc Daily as well is the simple fact that it gives you all the floor plans, all the sections, all the elevations in great detail. 
So you're not just looking through some amazing photos and going, oh, how did they actually make that space work? How did they make that room work? You know very quickly how that architect was thinking by simply looking at the floor plans. There aren't many resources out there that give you all the information in one simple page. So ArcDaily is by far one of the best resources that you can use to get architectural inspiration from. Moving further away from the cliches, the next point of inspiration is architectural design magazines. If you work in an architectural firm, more than likely you have them coming into your door every single week. If you don't work in an architectural firm and you're a member of the board or any architectural association, most likely you're gonna get a magazine through them as well. So one way or another, by being in the profession, those magazines end up at your door. So you're gonna be able to grab some inspiration from them. These magazines aren't exactly architectural inspiration per se in terms of elevations or floor plans. They're more so inspiration for actual products. So at the end of the day, when your process is almost completed and you're at the very last stage of design, trying to compile that specification, the products you select are pivotal to how that project is gonna look. You can put together a $5 million home, but if you put project home quality furnishings and fittings into it, it's not gonna look that price. So you really wanna make sure that you're up to date with all the latest products, especially if you're working in that luxury residential space. Even if you're not, even if you're working in the budget space, you still have to know what budget products are coming out. So it isn't all about finding inspiration on architecture and colors and all that. It is as well about finding inspiration about the best and newest products. And finally, you can draw inspiration from those around you. This one is a little bit more Australia based and more specifically Western Australia based. I don't know about other cities and I don't know about other states or countries. You can find some great inspiration on the council's website. So for example, anybody that has submitted a development application with any council in Western Australia can easily look up their information. You can go onto any city's website, find a development application that's currently in the process and out for public comment and analyze their design. You can understand what's working in the market, what your competitors are doing, what anybody in that space is doing, and especially you can find out what they're doing in that exact same area. So it becomes a lot more targeted understanding and a lot more targeted inspiration. You're not looking at things that work in completely different climates. You're looking at things that you know are working in that exact location that you're about to start designing something for yourself. The downside of this is the council websites are flooded with information on different projects. There is hundreds of thousands of different projects that you can go into and every single one of them is two, three, four hundred, five hundred megabytes every time you download them. So you can click on one project, wait five minutes for it to download and it can be not relevant at all. They give you some really basic titles like suburban commercial area. They don't exactly tell you what it is, if it's apartments, if it's townhouses, if it's restaurants, cafes or anything. Until you go inside that document package, you have no idea but it does genuinely just give you a lot of endless information on any type of drawing that you're looking for. Finally, there's one last resource that I recommend for getting architectural inspiration. It is definitely left wing, but it has been in the media a little bit, so it's probably more so known to you now than ever before. And that is Reddit. Reddit has just an endless supply of architectural inspiration. There are a number of subreddits that you can draw inspiration from, from interior design to exterior design, to architectural modeling and 3D modeling. For example, some of the best subreddits that I follow for just ridiculous ideas are the simple ones. R forward slash architecture, R forward slash architect, R forward slash 3ds max. We also have some more ridiculous ones that just push the boundaries of architectural design, like architecture porn and just design in general. Sometimes you can find the best inspiration from product design and not just architecture. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. This video still forms one of my 28 videos in 28 days. It would usually be, I'll see you next Monday, but in this case, I'll see you tomorrow.